Notice that the value in front of x squared is not 1. We cannot complete the square until this value is 1. To make the value in front of x squared be of 1, let's divide 6 to every single term in the equation. And now the 6 are going to cancel out. So we're going to get x squared and negative 48 divided by 6, that is 8. And on the right hand side, we're going to get negative 2. So now notice that the value in front of x squared, it is 1. Now we can start the process of completing the square. In our first step, we want to put all the variables on one side and all the constants on the other. To make this happen, let's get the term with negative 2x and try to move it to the left hand side so that it stays with x squared. And this term with negative 8, let's move it to the right hand side to move all the constants to the right. To make this happen, let's start by adding 2x to both sides. Now notice that all the variables are on the left. And to move the negative 8 to the other side, let's add 8 to both sides. So we're done with our first step. Now, let's look at the number that is in front of the term with x on it. We're going to get the value that is in front of x. And we're going to do two procedures to it. First, we're going to divide by 2. Which will give us 1. And now that number, we're going to square it. Which will still give us 1. And we're done with our second step. Now the last step, we're going to get this value that we obtained. And we're going to add it to both sides of the equation. So on the left hand side, we're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And on the right hand side, we're going to get 8 plus 1 as well. And we are done with the procedure of completing the square. Now let's simplify our result. So now notice what's going to happen if we factor out the left hand side of this equation. We're going to be looking at for two numbers that if you multiply them, it gives you the value of 1. And at the same time, those two same numbers, if you add them up, they need to give you the value of 2. And notice that those numbers are 1 and 1. If we get these two numbers and we multiply them, they do give me 1. And those two same numbers, if we add them up, they do give me 2. And notice that the value of 1 was also the number that we raised to the second exponent in our procedure. The left hand side, now we can write it in factor form as x plus 1 times x plus 1. And the right hand side, it is still 9. But when you have the same expression multiplied by itself, that's the same as that expression raised to the second. And now that we have the new form of our equation, it is easier to solve for x. Notice that x is inside of a parenthesis that is raised to the second exponent. The first thing that we want to do, let's get rid of that second exponent. Let's take the square to both sides. And on the right hand side, the square root of 9 is 3, but because we took the square, we need to consider the plus and the minus. And now we need to consider two equations. The first equation, when we consider the positive side of the plus and minus, and the second equation, when we consider the negative side of the plus and minus. And now we solve them individually. In our first equation, let's subtract 1 to get the x by itself. So now we have our first solution. And in the second equation, let's subtract 1 as well. And now we know that x is of a value of negative 4. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.